Hi, good morning everyone. Let's get started with our next training session which is on SAP's provisioning tool. So SAP has released a provisioning tool which is basically consolidating and combining all the SAP INST files into one tool so that we don't have to run around to figure it out which is the INST file which we need to use it. So all the new and the upcoming versions all the new and upcoming upgrades is put into this particular tool and this tool has one SAP INST using which you can do the upgrades or installations especially the installations only for multiple type of systems say for example it could be a business suite it could be a Java system it could be a, any other standalone system so depending on the depending on say here you can see that these are the different things which is clubbed in this so every uh, upgrade of this particular tool they are adding more and more products for the upgrade you can see the netweaver is there you can see the business suites are there the java based products are there so you can see that ehp uh, 7.3 ehp1 is there developer edition is there business suite 2010 business suite 2011 Business Suite powered by SAP HANA is there. Okay, then there is some generic installation options are also available. So generic means that these are the options which can be used, uh, especially all the migrations that is export and import and other third party tools like uh, Live Cache. Uh, it's not a third party, but these are the tools, other tools which is also available in this and here you can see that for SAP Enhancement Pack 1 for SAP NetWeaver 7.3 you can see these are the different operating system and databases for which the installation media is available using using the provisioning tool say for example if we go for Oracle and here you can see the step 1 is the preparation work okay so and here you can see other things like SAP systems so under the SAP systems you will see things like application server ABAP process integration it's a this is a PI then you have the application server Java in standalone engines okay then the optional standalone units okay apart from that you have additional SAP system instance system copy so you can see that most of the stuff is getting consolidated and the way SAP is moving forward is they are trying to consolidate and put the installations and uh, the OSDB export import or the export import for these systems into one tool which is the SAP's provisioning tool. So they have taken out SAP INST from the new medias and this is available only in the provisioning tool. So we have no choice but to use this provisioning tool it's good for us also because we don't have to run around and search for where the master installation master is available so that we can start the installation or if we need to do an export or import if we do need to do an OSDB migrations also if we need to perform any migrations we need to run for this particular tool okay so that's where this tool comes handy you can see why what can be done in the standard system you can see basically you have you can create your mandatory instances using say central service instance database instance primary application server instance okay so and additional instances as well can be created so we have started the inst so installation using this particular tool you can see I'm going with the custom installation so just make sure that you select custom because you have the flexibility of customizing the installation parameters which is extremely important because it's difficult to use as is the typical parameters okay now the first step here in this particular case is assigning the system id which is extremely important destination drive is selected automatically okay so we are going with that and let's assign system id it's extremely important to select the right system id because what happens is that your landscape strategy to an extent 
depends on the system ID selected for a particular system. Say for example, if you have a system, say XI system, you need to go with the naming convention, something like DX1 for development system. Okay, here you can see that it was giving some message that this cannot be used because this is already in use. So we'll select uh, another name, say QX1 we have selected. Okay, now in this particular screen, you can see that set the FQDN for the system. So we have selected set up the FQDN that is the fully qualified domain name for this particular uh, installation. Now the next thing is we need to select the Unicode kernel for NW731 because this is a 731 installation. It's a brand new installation. So we need to select the kernel that is what is the kernel we are going to use here. So just select the kernel and so here you can see that this is a kernel basically these are the DVDs which is downloaded from SAP marketplace we can select them and once we have selected them basically we need to make sure that there is a file called label.ini label.ac file and it should have this entry that is that should contain SAP AK colon 72 colon U kernel so this should be the content of that file that helps to identify which file or which is the software so this is using this file SAP identifies the the kernel which should be used for the installation okay so if the kernel selected is correct what will happen is that it will it can go to the next step otherwise unless it finds out the correct the kernel media by validating through the label.asc file we will not be able to move forward to the next step okay so that is the step one the, the one of the main input here because we need to make sure that we are supplying the right kernel for the right for this particular version and we need to make sure that the kernel which we are selecting is unicode enabled okay so here you can see now we are going back to that screen and what we are trying to do here is uh, we are showing you basically where this particular SAP INST is there and the next step is we are running this starting this again as administrator okay because for some reason we close that particular window so when we restart this it will ask do you need to restart with the new option in this case instead of restarting with new options what I will do is I will select the already defined options okay so which gives the flexibility that we don't have to go back to defining all the parameters initial parameters like the system ID we had selected the Unicode kernel folder that we had selected so we don't have to go back and define say for example if we are at the and state or if we have already started we come across some errors during the process so we need to restart this tool okay so restarting is extremely important and we should make sure that we are selecting the right option when it gives that okay do you want to start with the new option or do you want to run with the existing options okay so now we are again back to this particular SAP INST which is in the provisioning tool so we will just go to the the version that we require so under oracle you can see i am doing uh, sap system installation and under sap system this being an xi system what i am doing is i am going ahead with the option called okay so here you can see under standalone okay under standalone we have okay so basically under the standalone these are the different options which are available okay and then optional standalone units you can see so basically these are the things which is available depending on what we are trying to do say here you can see process orchestration so process orchestration is one thing so these are actually the things which is used in the PI if we are going ahead with the PI system installations th th this is what is required okay so just make sure that we select the right options okay that is extremely important because 
we should spend some time figuring out and finding out and validating which is the right option should be selected so we should make sure that we select the right option okay so once the right option is selected then things this particular tool takes care of the rest of the thing because this tool gives an flexibility this is the starting point because we are doing a new installation so we have an option to do any of these installations here so we can either install see netweaver systems netweaver 7.3 one system we can set it up a developer studio etc okay that's all pretty much i wanted to cover in this particular training session thank you for joining and have a nice day bye bye